Let's get more on this now with Andreas Umland, who's an analyst at the Stockholm Centre for Eastern European Studies. He joins us now from the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. Really good to have you back with us, Andreas. Let's start with uh, the first portion of the elections on Sunday, and that was uh, to change Moldova's constitution to essentially enshrine the fact that uh, Moldova would work towards EU membership. Now, the official results show that uh, the yes vote won in that case by uh, a razor-thin majority, and that's despite alleged Russian interference in that vote. Uh, what's your reaction to that outcome? Well, first of all, it's good that, um, after all, um, uh, perhaps these uh, uh, interference from outside, it's still enough um, to um, to change, indeed, the constitution. Um, the odd thing here is that this result uh, contradicts the opinion polls and that uh, there should have been a much larger support for EU accession. Um, and, in fact, um, Moldova has already for a long time been seeking EU accession. That's a largely uncontroversial topic in Moldova, although in some regions, like in Gagauzia and in Transnistria, um, there is resistance against this. These are regions that are connected to Russia. And, of course, the second part to those elections was uh, the presidential vote. The, the incumbent, Sandu, is uh, seen as a pro-Western leader. What do you think will happen there? Will she be returned for another term? That is now an op open question because uh, she won in the first round, but not um, with over 50 percent. So there will be a second round. And um, if you uh, add, add the uh, votes for the other candidates, which are largely uh, pro-Russian, then um, then perhaps the, the, the major pro-Russian um, candidate could also win in the second round. But if we um, if we proceed from the uh, non-interference in the next round of these presidential elections, perhaps Sandu will still win. But it's now an open question after this um, this result, and uh, one just hopes that the uh, that the next election day will be without outside interference. Yes, and do you believe uh, the veracity of these uh, Russian interference claims? Because not only has the Moldovan president said that that was happening, but the EU has also said that as well. Yes, um, at least the EU and also the um, Moldovan government would not say this for nothing. And as I mentioned already, there is a, is a surprising difference here on the EU accession between the opinion polls and the referendum results. So um, that is an indicator of the um, of the uh, interference because uh, th that should not have happened. There should have been a much clearer majority for EU accession. And what does this say about uh, the war in Ukraine? Obviously, Ukraine is a neighboring country to Moldova. Was this a referendum in any way on what Russia was doing in Ukraine? Not directly on what Russia is doing in Ukraine, but for Ukraine, this was an enormously uh, important both referendum and election. Um, here in Kiev, this has been watched uh, very carefully because um, if you look at the map, Moldova is sort of in between um, Ukraine and um, and the European Union. Moldova is also uh, a part of the so-called association trio. It's a close ally of, of Ukraine. And then there is the question of the so-called um, Moldovan, <clears throat> um, uh, the Transnistrian Moldovan Republic, a separatist territory between um, uh, the government-controlled um, territory of Moldova and Ukraine which is, uh, one could say, um, a Russian satellite state. And now the question will be what happens to this, um, this so-called Transnistrian Republic. It's not recognized, not even by Russia recognized as a, as a state. Uh, so um, this has larger, uh, larger implications for the geopolitics of Eastern Europe and is also important in many ways for Ukraine. Yes, and you're currently in the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. We know that Vladimir Zelensky has been uh, on a bit of a diplomatic blitz uh, throughout Western Europe trying to maintain the support of the EU and other leaders. Uh, how do people in Kiev feel about the conflict at this stage? 
Well, there is a certain feeling of resignation because the Western help in terms of the amount of the help, the type of weaponry and the permission to use the Western weaponry also on Russian state territory is not um, as far reaching as uh, Ukraine has requested. And that is the main reason that now the war is not going well. Um, Russia is making certain advances in the Donbas and um, Russian uh, and Ukrainian cities are bombed by Russia every night. Um, Kiev was tonight attacked uh, like most uh, of the previous nights, although Kiev is well, well protected, but other, other uh, cities like Kharkiv has been again uh, hit with, with a large um, lighting bomb that has destroyed um, um, an, an apartment building and uh, lots of civilians uh, suffer from these uh, terrorist campaigns against um, apartment buildings, hospitals, uh, schools, churches and so on. Okay, Andreas Umland, we'll leave it there. Thanks, uh, as always, for joining us on the program. Thanks for having me.